Jordan Parks has committed to Oklahoma, and we're going to talk about it after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU-related, college football-related, sports-related. We have a good time, and today we're going to talk about six foot four, 320-pound offensive lineman. Yep, Aaron Parks. He's committed to Oklahoma, joining a 2020 class that is loaded with offensive linemen. There are 18 commits in this class now, and the linemen are Andrew Rame, Nate Anderson, Noah Nelson, Anton Harrison. Of course, Andrew Rame out of Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, the number one player in the state of Oklahoma this year. Really good get for Bill Beatonbow on the heels of three straight games of 300 yards rushing or more, Bill Biedenbow has done nothing but put offensive linemen into the NFL draft. This season was expected to be perhaps a down season as he's going to be breaking in or has been breaking in four new starters on the offensive line. You got Creed Humphrey at center. Everybody believes that he has an opportunity to be a first round draft pick. We know about the guys on either side of him and Tyrese Robinson, Marquise Hayes, and then at left tackle, Eric Swenson, and right tackle, Adrian Ely. All those guys have done is just maul people. And even as they are still working out the kinks in what that offensive line is going to be, you got R.J. Proctor on the bench who's ready to go at left guard or left tackle. And you got Bray Walker, Daryl Simpson, Wade in the wings. Anton, excuse me, Anton. Aaron is one of those guys that you really wanted to have. He was a former Penn State commit. He had been down to his final three of Oklahoma, Alabama, and North Carolina. Aaron Parks also name-checked Trent Williams as his favorite offensive lineman, which makes a lot of sense. He's from Maryland, and Trent Williams plays for the Washington Redskins. At least he does right now. But Trent Williams was outstanding at Oklahoma, and you can make a good argument that he might be one of the best players to ever play in the NFL out of Oklahoma if you're paying attention to just what it means to be a left tackle in the NFL. You also can look at Orlando Brown out at Baltimore. You can look at Drew Samia with the Vikings. You can look at Ben Powers with Baltimore as well. You go around the league, you'll see not just Oklahoma players, but Bill Biedenboe, protégés, and offensive linemen. I was wondering about this class because it feels like now we know we're probably not going to get a 2020 quarterback to join the class because you've just loaded up on offensive linemen. You also have two outstanding running backs in Jace McClellan and Seth McGowan. You've got a couple slot receivers, actually three I mean, pretty good kids in Brian Darby, Trevin West, and of course, DJ Graham. I'm also interested to see how this continues to fill out defensively. Bryson Washington is obviously in the class, as is Ryan Watts, who's very much committed. Grinch is getting his kids into this class, and you can understand why offensive linemen want to come and play for Bill Biedenboe, why this is an outstanding get for Oklahoma, and what this 2020 offensive line class could be in two or three years' time. Hats off to Bill Biedenboe. He has been busting his behind, putting together an outstanding class full of kiddos that he knows he can coach, that he knows can do well, that he understands can lead Oklahoma into the future. What does this mean for Oklahoma's 2020 class? Well, they jump into the top 10 at number 8. They're still number 2 in the Big 12 behind Texas, which is sitting at number 5 and has been going gangbusters in 2020. They're making a charge up. They might... They might actually finish inside the top three. Oklahoma finishing in the top 10 would be a really big deal today. Yes, they're in there. I don't know if they can hold on to this. You don't have a quarterback in the class. I can't underscore how much that matters when we're talking about rankings and we're talking about points and we're talking about how you're going to finish with your re recruiting rankings class. But also, it doesn't seem like Oklahoma really cares. I mean, and I understand why they don't. You're going, Jalen Hurts is starting quarterback now. Spencer Rattler can sling the ball around. Tanner Mordecai is number two on the depth chart. And you've already got 2021 number one quarterback, Brock Vandegrift, committed to the class. You understand what you have at quarterback. And there's this added thing about maybe you could go get a kid out of the transfer portal. It seems like we're just going to see this become a trend in August. Kids are going to lose out on a job, and they're going to go into the portal. We'll see where they come out. Maybe one of them might come out at Oklahoma this time next year. We'll have to wait and see on that. But what does this mean for Oklahoma and what it wants for the rest of the 2020 class? Well, that actually is a really good question because 18 is a lot for what I thought was going to be around 20, right? So 2021 20, in there, just because you don't have a lot of seniors 
in this roster right now. I think there are like 16 seniors on the roster at Oklahoma at present, which means you're bringing in more kids than you're going to graduate. I don't necessarily think you got the bodies. Remember, you got 85 scholarship kiddos that you can have at any given year. You can oversign, but sometimes that gets counted differently depending on early signings and whatnot. But I don't think Oklahoma's there. I think they're pretty much done now because you got your linebackers, Brendan Walker, Edge Cooper among them. You've got a number one JUCO defensive tackle, number one JUCO player in Perrion Winfrey. You filled out at some of the positions of need that you absolutely needed to go and take care of. But you're set at defensive line. You're set at defensive tackle. You know that Grinch wanted to get in some guys, particularly in secondary, that he himself wants to coach, that he himself wanted to evaluate and bring in. And on the offense, man, you're set up. You got three five-star wide receivers. You got what is basically a five-star tight end in Stogner. You are reloading on the offensive line. You're reloading at running back. You understand that you're going to be pretty good at slot for a while as well. So when you're talking about giving points for filling needs and giving points for did you get what you needed to get out of 2020? Absolutely. Oklahoma is there. So you're going to have to be critical and be a critic when you go and look at this class because you're going to have to defend this class way more than you're going to be able to just laud it because it ain't going to have the ranking that a Oklahoma class might have following a college football playoff and after four straight Big 12 championships, especially as you're going to have to continue to contend with what Texas is doing and how Texas is doing things. Well, Seems like Lincoln is doing a very good job of getting the guys that he needs on both sides of the ball to go and win championships, and that's what it is about, right? But recruiting does matter. Knowing the background of the kiddos does matter. Knowing how many stars is a very good predictor of who's going to do what at the next level to say nothing of what goes on at the NFL should they be fortunate enough to get drafted. All right, that is it for me. Doses.